Hello there, Green Knight there. Welcome to another video installment. Uh, this time I'm looking at my second pod game in the Vessel World Cup. This time I'm also on top here. I already loaded the log file that I remembered to make. And down here we have beginner to winner. You can see my uh, analysis of his uh, fleet and my own for that matter in previous uh, videos but let's just uh, have a quick look he has uh, i got the assault cruiser with uh, reactive gunnery and of course uh, he has both expert shield techs and also electronic countermeasures and he has engine techs so this is a very mobile ship actually and with agatha and sm it will be very hard to kill if he takes a double brace. On the other hand, he might take uh, evade since I have the onager. Uh, I think I would have taken a second brace, but that's just me. Ashoka, always good. It's a command actually, so it can use uh, disposable capacitors to capacitors to good effect. And we have intensive fire firepower here. Great card. Um, and he has parts resupply, so I don't quite get that. I think I would have taken munitions and then used uh, Ashoka to to change those as uh, needed. Uh, I don't think these guys really need. Uh, um, but maybe he's thinking uh, electronic countermeasures, and then he can use the Soka to convert uh, as needed for intensify. Maybe that's the plan. So both Cham and is it Shib Shrib Shrib Sir Gob? I don't know how that's pronounced. Hondo Bright Hope. So that's a tough little one. I need a curse to take it out and a little little screen here. Um, so my basic plan going in is that uh, taking out this uh, cruiser is going to be hard unless I have first player. And he has the choice and he decides to go uh, first. So I'm second again. Uh, so I'm really thinking from the start that uh, taking out the cruiser and getting a 10 10 one is probably out of the question. It depends on setup, uh, of course, but... Uh, uh, well, if he sets up a bit defensively and uh, keeps uh, moving with that uh, assault cruiser speed two with engine techs, uh, it's going to be hard to catch. He has a big side arc, so it can just curl around. Um, so I decide that uh, I will uh, go for the 8-3, minimize my own casualties, and try to take out uh, the little ships. And I Pretty confident I can do that because okay the Pelta has the Wade Brace uh, redirect combo which is a pretty tough uh, uh, little chip uh, but it's speed two so escaping from an ISD and an honor girl is uh, practically impossible. These guys are speed three but unlike the hard cells from the previous game they have no brace so once that evade is gone or the range drops below extreme uh, they are in a, a difficult position, and they also have a lot less uh, shields than the hard cells. So no brace and less shields. So the idea is to kill these guys. Uh, yeah, I bright hope if I can, but it's not uh, that important. Uh, and if possible, pick out of these squads uh, uh, using, of course, uh, the uh, whale plus gendon combo to lock down the counter i can't take counter three from shara um, so we can just look at how the setup uh, went i'm just gonna step through that he picks asteroid tactics everybody seems to think asteroid tactics is the shit so my deployment of obstacles isn't that uh, um different from uh, before uh, but this time i put the big uh the big one the big debris field over to the right to create a sort of uh, 
a sort of screen there. I can both uh, put a slug there and uh, it can also block very easy access uh, to my flank. That means I don't have anything uh, in this area, but uh, but that's okay. I have to experiment a little bit. Uh. So I set up uh, pretty defensively like I did last time, uh, but I decide to give my big ships a little bit more room because last time it got really, really crowded. So I make sure to open up the distance a little bit. And also because I get to deploy the honor last, uh, and because this one has no brace, I'm pretty confident that uh, it can dominate uh, this area. So I will use Cataclysm from uh, the start. So looking at uh, at the setup like this, uh, I am pretty confident that my 8-3 plan can go through. Uh, but I'm also hoping that maybe, just maybe, I can use the ISD and the Gosanti to block the uh, MC-80 here and uh, actually take it out. Uh, it's an option. I'm not sure it, it is doable. And as the game progresses, uh, that doesn't actually happen. But uh, it would have been nice to. I at least had the option. So. Uh, let's just keep this focused uh, and do some more stepping here. And the so we are setting uh, commands here. And this time I make sure to have uh, a key uh, navigate command on Onager to get a re good reposition. I do take the concentrate fire on round one because I hope to punish uh, the little guy there. And I also realized that it could be tricking me here because it could hand out uh, a token from the flotilla and then convert it with Ashoka and drop to speed one and hard turn. Uh, but if I herd him into this uh, part, uh, it will be fine. So we can just fast forward a bit. Uh, and I do some shooting and you can't actually see my... Uh, my shots here but i can drag okay i can undo a bit so it's not uh this is my initial roll and then i do a veteran gunner and then i uh <laughs> choke um need out it weather and this is the start of my game so this is this is what I could do with five red uh, dice uh, um, with a veteran gunner reroll and reroll from Wader Choking Nida. So, not a great start. And then I joke, maybe my dice will get better. So, maybe they will. So, I'm just uh, fast forward here and I got that uh, sort of pushes forward here and this is um, one of the things uh, I'll, I'll talk li a little bit about uh, what I did and didn't do in turn one and wh why it was relevant for the rest of the game let's let's uh, okay so this is the end state for two or the start of uh, the end state of one on the start of round uh, two um as you can see, I did a little dance here uh, with the ISD. I wanted to keep the pressure up on this area. And I think I managed that pretty well. Uh, I did not turn my on yet uh, um, because I also want to have pressure on this area, uh, which I also accomplished rather well, I think. And his entire fleet has turned sideways, uh, and they are not at all suitable for shooting at me sideways. So um, I'm thinking that he more or less uh, gave up uh, trying to win this uh, battle and instead want to minimize his uh, casualties. But it's a long game. I, my first shot with Onager wasn't very good, it, but it did a little bit of... Uh, of damage on his uh, on his ship there, 
um, and uh, well, uh, if you wonder how I got uh, damaged him, you uh, probably missed uh, spent that I spent on accuracy uh, before rerolling it to a run. Gunners. Um, no, this is maybe two accuracies. I think, yeah, maybe two accuracies. I had two accuracies, so I got to lock down the weight and the redirect, so I put two damage into his uh, ship. I was keeping his uh, two squadrons well away from my slugs and my squadrons. So, so I think that uh, beginner to winner just got intimidated by the Onager, and like he said, uh, after or during the game, he, he doesn't have enough, enough experience with them, so he kind of didn't know what to what to do. But uh, what happened here was uh, maybe not the correct way to go about it, because here my Onager is basically getting three shots for several turns without any return fire. But my play is not in any way perfect. Uh, for example, this flotilla here, which is my primary squad pusher uh, for this game, uh, is badly out of place already. I should have uh, taken a navigate on it and sped it up to speed two the first thing uh, in this uh, round. That would have given it a much, much better position for the entire game. As it were, my squadrons were not effective like they were last game. They were mostly just, uh, well, they did contribute, but I'm not very proud of them. Not very proud of my squadron plays this game. Also, the ISD was maybe more uh, interested in landing on the asteroid because it could and actually setting up for a good uh, block. And right now I'm yeah, I'm dominating this area, but at the same time, I'm not really blocking the MC-80. If I turn hard to block here, I won't be able to stop him going around. And I will also end up landing maybe on this one for several turns in a, a row. So already there are a couple of uh, mistakes uh, that will uh, become apparent later. But let's just uh, keep going here because uh, this is round two and then he hard turns in and misjudged the distance so he lands in blue range of the ISD and here I also do something uh, a little bit strange I have curled my ISD on the inside but I send this one further out and so I'm sort of making a gap there that will be a problem Later, and he goes, and this uh, happens a lot in this game. He gets a lot of one damage from landing on the on the slugs. Okay, so here my ISD is activating, and uh, this is the initial roll, and just to make sure, um, yeah, that's a very dead ship. So my dice uh, improved after that first shot round. And some link turbo lasers. And now you can see this is where it gets embarrassing because now you can see I have suddenly no way to to uh, block the MC80 without ending up in a bad position um, so i'm forced to do this move and that was suboptimal ideally i should be in this region now because then there would be no escape for him so a small uh, miscalculation on my part early made this much harder for me well but that's easy to say with the benefit of hindsight so pelta keeps going keeps going and he has to move i spent my pass token and we can bring up the dice window again i think 
and this is not a bad shot uh, even with four but he discards his weight so uh, yeah he takes one damage uh, seven uh, seven damage uh turned into six by the new now it's turned into one by the new evade rules so you can't say they don't work but now he has no evade so he's uh, probably dead and here we can see why i have a navigate turn two because suddenly i can put massive pressure on the mc80 and this would have been a great situation if my isd was here but it's there so you can see this one went out on the outside this one went in so a perfect mc80 shape gap here so all my pressuring here is uh, relatively worthless um but um i have two ships in uh in my ignition arc so i'm pretty pleased with that and my main goal for the one of my main goals for this game was use my own argument better and i succeeded in that i think so another round and squadrons haven't done much and that is because my gosanti is up here if it had gone to speed two it could have been down here and you can see that would have been much much better so he i move forward to do some splash i position well in here but actually that's Tycho, not uh shara so um i should maybe have zoomed in placing some slugs very useful uh yeah so basically stuff happens uh, there he can't shoot me with his front arc because uh he can only see my ass and has no line of sight um So he shoots me and we get a bunch of dice, dice results there. There is some rerolling. And I shoot back and actually do as much damage on him as he did on me. So reactive gunnery, yay! Romodi, yay! And that's a pretty good result. So he actually hurts my poor Gazanti. And then there is like half an hour of fiddling with the maneuver tool. But I can't say I blame him because if he managed to block himself here, he would be dead. So <laughs> it's important to get it right. Uh, the reason we have to deploy this manual token is because uh, we uh, there is a we found a bug it's been fixed in the next build but um yeah so now it's out of my arc and i know i cannot kill this ship so my isd put some hurt on the another good roll doesn't die of course it's a tough little bugger and i do some more damage to the so you can see i do five damage and he decides for some reason to discard his single brace and not getting a lot of uh, joy out of that uh, evade in this game so I should have taken a double brace i think so now this belta is dead as you can see it just hasn't died yet and the rest of the game is not super interesting uh, but we can just quickly go through it it tries to murder marek my Gosanti ends up in a very awkward position. So instead of having blocked this one and killed it, uh, yeah. But now my Onogu shoots, nearly kills it. I keep putting pressure on, uh, on this guy because you can see I have ignition black on both these ships. So my let's play the Onogu better. It's going very well. I don't bother too much with this one i have some secondary arcs here and i have marek yendan so this hammerhead is also dead it hasn't died yet but it will and look at this one instead of hanging around down here contributing flock and commanding squads is lamely sitting here and starting to get afraid of the mc80 so you can see how 
big a difference when you are swirling around like this, uh, not increasing your speed uh, on that first round. Maybe it could have started at speed two as well. Uh, but when it started at speed one, to be cautious, I didn't know how it set up for the rest of his grid. It should definitely have gone up to speed two on the first <coughs> round. So stuff happens. Uh, Air move the uh, space whales. We are at four at this time. I think we had used four hours, which is too much. And he gets a lucky shot with his rare arc. I tried hinting that he should shoot it with this far side, but uh, didn't matter. Kill it with one shot. Then my honor go. I uh, got a really nasty volley with an accuracy in the face that stripped it of shield. So then and there, I decided that it wasn't gonna try to chase down the M80 anymore, it would just go away. So RSD kills Pelta, throws some damage, turns this way, <coughs> and yeah. Then the Onogu kills the um, last Hammerhead, manages to land on the debris. Uh, but the game is mostly over here. Kill off Tycho after stripping his uh, scatter earlier. And then for some reason, my brain farts. I uh, should have just kept that Bright Hope pair and killed it. Um, but the game was very long and it's starting to get late. So I'm not sure why I suddenly decided to go after the MC80. Um, so basically nothing more happens except Meetle finally dies to Shara, and I tried to kill her, but I get her scatterless and down to one hull. So that's the end state. So overall, I'm, of course, pleased with the score. I was hoping for an 8-3. Uh, I had the opportunity to do a table, uh, but uh, due to non-optimal play on my part uh, that uh, opportunity went out the window already in uh, round maybe even possibly in round one at, at the very latest in round two i also mishandled my squadrons uh, including uh, not positioning my squadron pressure correctly but uh, overall i can't be too displeased uh, with uh, with my performance, uh, I did manage to use the Onager a lot better and also managed to sort of maneuver the ISD and the Onager in proximity with one another but without tripping into each other. So going forward, that's, um, that's some good lessons uh, there. A good, but a good learning game for me here. Definitely things that I can improve uh, upon. Uh, of course, my, you could always say my fleet was never in any real danger because he swirled to the left here with, uh, with his chip, chips. I think a much better strategy would be for him to, to curl with MC80, uh, but take the double brace and then time his uh, attack correctly so that he would uh, get these uh, nasty fellows here on target at long range just as the MC80 came in. He would have taken uh, losses, but he could have uh, destroyed my my Onager. Like uh, I lost it last game, so it's definitely possible to kill it. It's it's very squishy once you start concentrating on it. It goes down quickly. I also think if he had wanted, he could maybe have taken out the, the ISD. Maybe. I don't know. But that was never going to happen the way the game was set up and then played for round, uh, round one. Uh, in addition to learning a lot during this game, I, um, I gained some more confidence in the, the list. Um, yeah, I mishandled my squadrons, but uh, they still uh, did some relatively good work and i have my previous game in mind so i think my squadron complement those four aces they are uh, are doing a lot of uh, good for me here <clears throat> i also have a great deal of confidence in my uh, 
in my ships. Um, I think the Onagru ISD combo is uh, legitimate. Uh, the Onager can die, you can focus it down, kill it, but it, it's only 117 points. And if you do that, uh, that probably means the rest of my fleet will uh, live. So at worst, I'm only going to bleed 117 points, uh, maybe a flotilla, some squads, but uh, tabling me uh, is quite difficult. Uh, using Cataclysm, I can also start doing damage very early, uh, which is um, extremely important in a game that is only six rounds uh, long. And that uh, really gives some extra opportunities for uh, killing enemy ships and possibly also getting uh, a table. Uh, we'll see if that is uh, something I can manage in, a, in another game. Uh, the ISD2 is getting some, uh, I don't know, uh, it's getting some bad rep now because it's very expensive and you can't really take both gunnery teams and ECM any more. But I'm reasonably happy with my ISD2 in this configuration using Romodi. I'm not sure I would be using the ISD2 anymore with any other commander. Uh, but Romodi with uh, movable obstacles and the slugs uh, and so forth, I can get some uh, extra dice out of him. So it has very good um, good range. It can uh, reasonably expected to reach out and hurt stuff at, uh, at long and medium uh, ranges. Um, it also gets uh, a good number of accuracies and that's become fairly important. But uh, overall, maybe a Kuat uh, with Ordnance Experts and uh, external racks uh, would be both cheaper and better. I could have built Kuat, Countermeasures, Palp, Ordnance Experts, x rex I might even have uh, managed to squeeze in the uh, Sovereign title. Or... Um, even the Chimera, both of which could have been very useful for my list. Or I could have maybe, Mikkel is good, but he's not doing that much for this bit. So maybe I could have upgraded him into something more, more interesting. But okay, I think that's enough uh, theory crafting for today. My final pod game uh, will take place next uh, Wednesday. So you have to wait a bit for the final score and the last uh, review. Thanks for watching and goodbye.